So in your Shavasana, just see if you can lengthen your, or take your feet out a little bit wider. The hands a little bit wider away from the torso and turn the palms up to face the ceiling so that your shoulder blades can tuck down your back a little bit. Let's keep keeping the breaths coming through the nose, the concentration or the focus on your breath. It's without any force or pushing it anywhere, just see if the breath can reach gently into the lower space of the abdominals. Let it fill up through the ribs and into the chest. And each time you exhale, deflating the rib cage, deflating the abdomen. Keeping that going a few rounds at your own pace but try to create an even rhythm between your inhale and your exhale. So we call that your samavriti pranayama. So if you're inhaling for a count of four, try to exhale for a count of four as well. See if now that you've been still for a few moments, if you can soften anything else in the body, maybe around the hands or the face, or the shoulders. Whenever you next inhale, float the hands up towards the ceiling. Just give the wrists a roll out, stretch out the fingers, roll through the hands. Let that move into the elbows and the shoulders a little bit as well. So just get some movement rippling through the arms into the shoulders. Changing direction with whatever movement you're taking. And then reach the arms all the way back behind your head. So the back of the hands are to the floor. Stretch the fingers open and try and connect your fingernails into the ground, pressing them into the floor slightly. Take a really big breath so you feel as much movement around the rib cage as you breathe, opening out all those tiny intercostal muscles that wrap around each of the rib bones. Last couple of breaths where you are, continuing that full movement of the ribs. Particularly focusing as well on the exhale, that you're pulling the lower ribs in towards the abdomen, like you're knitting them into the belly. Slowly from there, just hop your legs over towards the right side of your mat. So they stay out long, so you can take both legs over and hook your left ankle on top of the right one. Then take your shoulders over to the same side. So you're creating a bit of a banana shape through your body. Maybe your right hand can just reach for your left wrist so that your hand can encourage that left arm a little bit further round. Try to keep the left side of your pelvis on the ground, so hip bones are square to the ceiling. Notice if you can physically feel your breath move more into that left side of the body. So give one more full breath where you are. And as you exhale, slowly bring the shoulders back center and then walk the legs over to the left side of your mat or just off the mat. The right ankle is gonna hook over the left one and then take your shoulders over in that same direction again. So it's gonna switch the hands. So it's your left hand that's encouraging that right arm over a little bit longer. Keeping the right side of your hips pressing down towards the floor so you haven't rolled over to one side. And then really deep breaths so that the breath moves into the right lung, the right side of the ribs a little more.
And last full round of breath. Then gently bring yourself back into the middle with the shoulders, bend the knees so that your feet come into the middle of the mat. And just bring the arms around to the sides of the body. So we're out along the floor in a T-shape or you can fold them back into that cactus position wherever they wanna be. Just lengthen your spine into the ground so your back feels kind of fully connected to the mat. And then just give the knees a gentle rock from side to side. Start the movement small, so you really pay attention to how your back is feeling. Pressing the opposite arm in, so if your knees are dropping over to the right, press your left elbow into the floor. And as the knees come over to the left, press the right elbow into the floor. Making it a little bit bigger with the knees each time you go. Eventually, let both knees drop all the way down to the left. Just let them flop wherever they fall to. Take a really big breath in. And as you exhale, try to lengthen the knees further away from your body. As if someone's pulling the knees in the direction that they're going, but just further away from you. Take another breath in where you are. And as you exhale, draw the belly down towards the spine, roll up through the center, try and use your core to lift the knees up. Stay at the center, take another breath in. As you exhale, let the knees drop over towards the right. Just again, let them fall wherever they flop to. Take a breath in. Your exhale lengthens the knees away from you, so particularly that left knee, just reaching away from your torso. Stay where you are, take a full breath in. And you use the strength of your exhale, the strength of your core to bring the legs back up to the center again. Center yourself out, take a full breath in at the middle. Exhale, knees drop back over to the left once again. This time you're gonna reach your right foot out to the side. So your right leg is gonna go long. And you can use your left hand just to catch hold of underneath the leg, wherever you can reach to. So maybe under the calf muscle or under the back of the knee. Try and bring those right toes around towards your shoulder as much as you can. So Jane, take that right leg over towards the left wall. So you're in a twist. That's it. And then use your left hand to pull it around. Perfect. Flex that right foot that you've extended out to the side so the toes curl back. Take two more breaths where you are. Using the exhale then to bend that knee, bring the legs back up to the middle. Just holding center, realign your spine. And as you exhale, drop both knees over to the right. So this time you're extending that left leg out to the side. Use the right hand to catch hold of underneath the leg. That's it, perfect. Encouraging the toes up towards your shoulder, flexing the foot, so push out through the heel. Keep the shoulders grounded and the breath moving. Two more breaths. Using that second exhale to bring the knee back up to the center. Take hold of your strap if you have it in reach of you. So good. So let's start with the right leg. Just have the strap kind of resting over your abdomen for now. Just bring the hands around the right shin and encourage that thigh as close as you can in towards your body. Keep the left leg bent. And then see if you can press the sole of that right foot onto the left thigh. So let the sole of the foot rest onto the thigh, that's it. And then walk your left heel as close in towards your body as you can. You can let it come onto the tiptoes. So you're almost using that left thigh to do the job. That's it. And then reach your arms back behind you. So you've got that right knee towards the chest, the arms are lengthening back, a little bit like a, a chain. 
and press your lower back into the floor. So it's not curling the tailbone up. So tailbone stays rooted, the shoulders stay rooted. From there, keep the legs as they are. Just reach your hands around for that strap in your abdomen and then hook the foot into the strap instead. Lifting then that right heel towards the ceiling. And if you wish to, you can lengthen your left leg out along the floor as far as it wants to go. It doesn't have to go flat. You can still keep a bend in the knee wherever it wants to go. Good. So just gently rocking this leg forwards and backwards to and from you. Motion, just within a couple of inches of range. Nothing too big. Just as though you're kind of rocking the thigh bone, your femur in the hip sockets, if you can imagine that. Just kind of dislodge any tension in the hip or in the lower back. Take a mini bend into your knee and then just turn your knee as though it's shining from one shoulder to the other. So it's going across from one shoulder to the other. A little turn in and turn out. So try to use almost just the kneecap. So the foot kind of stays where it is, just turning the knee in and out. So you're using your hip to go inwards and outwards. Yes, good, that's it. And then hold it when the knee is turning or facing your right shoulder, so it looks really parallel. Then press the heel up to the point where you feel a stretch at the back of the thigh. So it might mean that you keep a bend into the knee to feel that stretch. It's completely an individual placement. So just taking those little micro adjustments until you feel the peak of the stretch that is where your body needs it. Relax the elbows in towards your waist, so your arms are fairly relaxed. Try to press the right side of your pelvis down into the floor so we haven't lifted the right buttock off the floor. Really flex the foot. And while the pelvis is pressing down, see if you can create the feeling of your heel pressing up or your foot pushing into the strap. Curl the big toe and second toe back towards you so the foot is flexed and active. You might feel that just deepen the stretch pretty slightly. Two more breaths where you are. So then keeping the leg at this same, um, so keep it as straight as it is, just gonna go side to side with that kind of rocking motion again, a bit like a windscreen wiper feeling. Each time you rock side to side, make it a little bit bigger, like you did with the knees earlier. You can hold the strap however feels most kind of helpful. As it starts to get a little bit bigger, you let the foot go towards the floor. So you go inner thigh stretch to outer thigh stretch. That's it. Try to keep the shoulders grounded. It moves more into your back as well as that inner and outer thigh. And then we're going to slow it down. So next time your foot reaches over to the left, a little bit like the stretch that we did earlier, hold there. Push the foot into the strap and reach the heel away. The heel can drop further towards the wall on the left. Yeah. Bring it back up through the center and then open the leg out towards the right so you hold into that inner thigh stretch. Again, pushing the foot into the strap, hold the strap however it feels most helpful. Lift the leg back up again. We're going to go once more either side. So let the foot go all the way over towards the left. So you feel the right side of your pelvis lift off the floor into that twist. Push the foot into the strap. All the way back up through the center. And exhale, let it drop out to the right. All the way back up to the center. Bend both knees. Release the strap away from the right foot. Just pop it down somewhere that's still in reach. And place your ankle onto the left thigh. So just holding that more grounded figure of four. Keep the left foot on the ground. Use your right hand to press the knee open. So rather than that chain link, we've got the opening of the hip now. 
Let this connection of the legs drop down to the left, so you feel the sole of the foot connect to the floor, but the kneecap stays facing the ceiling. Switch hands, so your left hand is pushing the knee away from you, and the right hand is gonna reach back behind you, like the hands are reaching away from each other. If you really deepen into your breath, particularly the exhale, pulling the ribs in and the belly down away from that thigh, you might feel that lengthening just come across around the sort of hip bone of your right side, maybe into the side of your torso or down the thigh. Just exploring where you feel it. Using an exhale so you engage the core, bring this connection of the legs back up to the center. You can either stay where you are or bring the hands through the gap. So your right hand goes through the hole and then the left hand goes around the thigh. Pull it in. Lovely. Doesn't matter whether that left leg stays bent or reaches up a little straighter, wherever you want to have it. Again, more of an individual feeling. Lightly flex both feet, particularly that right one. So we just keep the ligaments around the knee aligned. So flex that foot, that's it. And if your right elbow meets the inner thigh, then use the elbow to push that knee away from you like you did with the hand earlier. And encourage the shin to come closer towards the shoulders. So the same way you are, take a few breath in. As you exhale, keep the head grounded, but see if you can curl the tailbone up. So you bring that shin really close into the body. Then try and have the feeling of leaving the shin where it is, but reach the tailbone back into the floor. So you deepen into that stretch just a little bit deeper. Stay where you are, take a full round of breath. See where you can soften. From here, release the hands from around your left leg. Just take the left foot to the floor again. Keep the legs as they are. Slide your right thigh onto the left one, like you're sitting cross-legged on the chair. Walk your left foot towards the right side of the mat and see if your right toes can step down to the left. So you've got the legs crossed, but the feet are grounded. Good. Either you stay where you are, you're still getting opening around the outer hips. If you can, we're gonna bring this connection of the legs in towards your body. So scoop the knees in towards your chest and see if the hands can reach underneath for your heels. So then you pull the feet out to the side. So if it feels like your feet aren't gonna reach into your hands, then keep them to the floor. It works just fine. Good. So flex the feet as they're floating and use your hands to try and draw the heels in the direction of the shoulders. Keep the tailbone rooting down, shoulders drawing back. Excellent. Stay where you are for two more breaths. If your feet are floating, and this go Makasana, we call it, so release the feet, untangle the legs, bring both feet to the floor, and just give the knees a little rock side to side or round in circles, anything that just loosens up your body, your back. From there, bring your left knee in towards your body, keep the right leg bent, foot to the floor. So use the hands around that shin to draw it in towards you, and then see if the left foot can rest onto your right thigh. So you find that kind of chain link feeling. So tuck the right heel in as close towards your body as you can. It can come onto the tiptoes. So that, that right thigh is keeping that left thigh in towards your torso. Reach the arms back behind you. Staying where you are for a couple of breaths. Try and keep the spine completely grounded from tailbone to the back of the neck. From there, bring the hands around that shin. Scoop it in towards you. Just let the right leg lengthen away a little bit. Bring the strap around the foot. So we use the strap to do the um, leg strap. And find that hamstring lengthening. Wrapping the hands around your strap so the arms can stay relaxed. Keep that soft bend in the knee, especially to start with at least. 
Find a little rocking of your leg going to and from your body, just within a few inches of range. So remembering that visualization of your thigh bone, your femur, rocking in the hip sockets, allowing your lower back to feel a little more heavy or relaxed. So Jane, lengthen that left heel up towards the ceiling, Jane, now. So your leg is a little bit straighter. The one that you have in the strap, that's it. Perfect. So then holding the leg steady, just lengthen your right leg slightly further away. More bend into your left knee. Keep the foot as still as it can feel as you turn your knee from one shoulder towards the other shoulder. So your thigh is turning in and turning out. That's it. When your kneecap is facing your left shoulder again, hold it there. Then lengthen the heel up a little bit longer until you find that stretch to the back of the thigh. If you want to, your right leg can go fully out straight or as straight as you want to take it. Press the tailbone into the floor. Keep that left side of your pelvis grounded for now. At the same time, have a sense of your foot pushing into the strap and see if you can maybe curl the big toe and second toe back towards you. Three more breaths where you are. Soften that hamstring slightly and then rocking your foot from side to side. Again, keep it small to start with and we start to build up the range of motion. You can keep adjusting the hold of your strap, however feels best to do so. A little bit bigger with the movement still. So your foot is coming towards the floor on the right, let the hip roll up, and towards the floor on the left. So you're hitting into the inner thigh and outer thigh stretch. Good. Next time the leg is reaching over towards the right, just hold it there for a couple of seconds. Push the foot into the strap, keep the shoulders grounded. Use an inhale to bring the leg all the way back up to the top. And as you exhale, lengthen it out towards the left. Use an inhale to bring it up through center. Exhaling over towards the right. Inhale, bring the leg up center, and exhale, reach it over to the left. Inhale, bring the leg back up center, bend both knees. So we come into that figure of four shape, but keep the right foot grounded for now. So open the knee and use your left hand to push the knee away from you, just to get that hip open. Then let the connection of your legs drop over towards the right. So the sole of the foot comes to the floor and that kneecap stays facing the ceiling. You've switched the hands. So your right hand is keeping the knee pressing away from you. Left hand is reaching back. Have a sense of the hands reaching away from each other so that you lengthen your torso. Really deep breath. Use the strength of your next exhale to bring that connection of the legs back up to the center. Thread the hands through the gaps. So you pull in that figure of four shape towards you. Hands around the back of the right thigh. Perfect. If your left elbow meets the thigh, you use the elbow to press the knee away and the shin is coming towards the body, lightly flexing both feet, particularly that left one at least. 
right leg can stay bent or lengthen up wherever you like to have it. Let's try and keep the tailbone rooted and the shoulders drawing back so the spine stays aligned. Take a breath in where you are. And as you exhale, keep the shoulders and head grounded, and just lift the tailbone up so it curls in towards you. Then try and keep the shin that little bit closer towards your body as you replace the tailbone to the floor. If you felt that deepen in, maybe relax your face again. <laughs> Take a full round of breath. And slowly release hold of the leg. Keep the legs connected as they are. Just take the right foot to the ground. Slide the left thigh onto the right one. Walk your right foot that's on the ground over towards the left and let your left foot come to the ground on the right side of the mat. So you find the kind of knot of the leg. So both feet on the floor if you can. Either you keep the legs here, or you pull the knees in towards the body, you pull into that gomakasana. Keep the legs crossed straight if you can, so the left leg is wrapped over the right, cross the thighs, that's it. Yeah, perfect, and so you are keeping the feet wide. If the feet are floating, then you've threaded the hands under to grab the heels, and draw the heels out to the sides of your room towards the shoulders, you want to try and keep the toes level if they're floating, so you're resting a uh, plank of wood on your foot, like your alternative contemporary table stand or something. <laughs> Take it a full breath in. As you exhale, slowly untangle the legs, bring the feet to the floor, give the knees a gentle rock side to side. Just going to finish on the ground with the quad stretch after we've done lots of folding of the um, hip flexor. Just want to open that out again. So take the feet out as wide as your mat is and keep the heels tucked close towards your body. Feet wide. Drop both knees over towards the left side of your mat. So you just again let the legs fall wherever they flop to. Reach your right knee forwards and down. If you can, use the right hand to grab hold of that right ankle and tuck the heel closer towards the buttock. Good. So you almost try and get that big toe nailed to the floor. Reach that right knee forwards. It drags the thigh away from the hip. And then knee reaches down towards the floor. Each time you exhale, imagine you're trying to tuck the tailbone so you bring your back a little bit closer to the floor. Reach the right arm back behind you so that whole right line of the torso into the thigh feels lengthened. Take a couple of really big breaths. Exaggerate the movement of the breath into the belly and the ribs. Using your next exhale, bring the knees up to the center, give that right knee a stretch out if you need to, and then reset the feet again so they're as wide as your mat, close up towards your body. Let both knees then drop over towards the right, and maybe you can use the left hand to reach that left heel close around towards the buttock. And get the toe nail on the floor if you can. Reach the left knee forwards and down, away from your torso. As you're exhaling, try to tuck the tailbone so you bring that lower back just that nudge closer towards the ground. Reach the left arm back behind you. So imagine your hand and that left knee are trying to pull apart from each other. Take a couple of really big breaths, again, exaggerating the movement that comes into the abdomen and the rib cage. Using your next exhale, bring the knees up to the center, stretch out that left knee, and place the feet to the floor. Bring the knees in towards your body, just take a hug of the legs in, take a rock side to side on your back. 
from here, either roll yourself over to one side or take a gentle rock through to seated. And come all the way over or sweep the legs around it into all fours. Stretch the fingers wide into the ground so that your hands feel a bit of a stretch into the floor. Pad through the hands like you would in a downward dog paddling through your feet. So lift the palm of one hand and then switch. So palm as your fingers get a stretch out. See the fingers flat down, lift the palms up. The palm up, fingers down. That's it, and then switch. Good, a couple more times. And then keep both palms rooted. Take an inhale as you lift your tailbone up and your chest up into that back bend phase of your cat cow. As you exhale, round the spine the other way, really pushing through the arms and through your feet, through the front of your ankles lengthen. Inhale again, lift the tailbone up, lift the chest up. Exhale, rounding through the other way. One more time either side, inhale to lift. And exhale to round. Level out the spine, lean the weight forwards, take a breath in. As you exhale, lean the weight backwards slightly towards your heels and bring your left ear towards the left shoulder. So you feel a little lengthening through the right side of your neck. Inhale, come back center, lean the weight forwards. As you exhale, hinge the weight backwards, bring your right ear towards the right shoulder. Inhale, come center. So deepen into that neck stretch, take your hands further forwards. Exhale, hinge the weight back, bring your left ear towards the left shoulder. Inhale, come up center. Exhale, hinging back, right ear to right shoulder. Good. Inhale, come back up to the center. Replace the hands under your shoulders if you'd adjusted them. You're going to keep the left hand rooted to the floor. The right arm is going to reach out to the, seat, out to the side and up to the ceiling. Just holding there on this first one. Keep pushing down through that supporting hand so the top fingers reach up. Lift the gaze only if it feels okay with the neck. Otherwise, just keep the gaze out to the side. Make sure your left hand is still completely rooted to the floor. So particularly notice that index finger is going to want to peel up. Keep it rooted. Take a full breath in. And as you exhale, sweep this right arm underneath the left armpit. It's going to slide all the way down to the floor, bringing your shoulder and the head to the ground. If the head doesn't comfortably reach the floor, then place a cushion or a brick underneath the side of the head. Sit. Press lightly through that left palm so you feel your shoulders almost stack one on top of the other. And feel the breath still moving into the belly and ribs to relax. So try tucking chin to the chest slightly. Staying where you are, take a last full breath in. And as you exhale, press through that left palm again to lift yourself back into all fours. Both hands under the shoulders. Take a little wriggle of your back. And then realign the spine back straight again. Root nice and wide through that right palm. Your left hand is going to go out to the side and up towards the ceiling. Only taking the gaze as far as your neck feels comfortable to go. Consciously press into that right hand, particularly that index finger that wants to peel up. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, then thread the left arm underneath that right armpit and out to the floor and side. Shoulder and temple to the floor, like you're listening to the ground, but keep the back of the neck long. Lightly press into that right hand so the shoulders stack. Take a really deep breath. On your next exhale, press into that right palm so that you lift yourself gently back up to all fours. And again, give your back a little bit of a wriggle. Tuck the toes underneath you. We're going to come into a downward facing dog, but keep a squat through the legs. So deep bend into the knees. 
push the floor away and keep the palms wide and those index fingers rooted still want to peel up paddling through the feet to bring some movement into the legs or swing the hips from side to side From there, as you inhale, we're going to roll forwards into your plank position. So you may need to lengthen yourself out a little bit on this first one. From your plank, take a full breath in. And as you exhale, go back into your downward facing dog. So you shouldn't have to adjust the legs too much again. Inhale, come back forwards to plank. Exhale, go back into your downward facing dog. Last time, come forwards to plank, inhale. This time, as you exhale, place the knees to the floor. Keep the elbows hugging in and the bring the chest to the ground. Come all the way down onto your front. Good. Take the feet as wide as your mat is, so open the legs out a little bit wider, and then bring the hands out a little bit wider too, feel like a parachute jumping pose. Press through the hands and through the feet, lift the breastbone up, coming through a gentle cobra. Try and keep the little toe edge of your feet turning towards the floor, Try to let the legs turn in, that's it. Lengthen the arms further away from you, so the arms or the elbows start to float and lengthen up, that's it. From there, just drop the shoulders into your back a little. Good. On an exhale, pull the abdominals into that pose. Stay where you are, take another breath in. Exhale again, just pull the abdominals up as they are trying to lift them away from the ground. Last breath in. Exhale, this time reach the chest forwards as you come back into the floor. Bring the legs a little bit closer towards each other, so about hips distance apart with your feet. Slide the hands underneath your shoulders. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, lift up into all fours again. Lift the chest and the hips at the same time. Fold back into your child's pose from there. Good. And then when you're ready to, come back forwards through all fours, tuck the toes and come back into your downward facing dog. Again, paddle through the feet, so sweep the legs or the hips one side to the other. And begin to walk your feet towards your hands or the hands towards the feet, whichever feels good to go. Lovely. Holding in the fold for a couple of breaths, so maybe a little bend in the knees or as much bend as feels comfortable. Allow the arms to just dangle or you can hold on to elbows, whichever you prefer. Keep some soft movement, swaying side to side. Let the head completely relax so that you use the weight of your skull to lengthen a bit of space in the discs of the spine. Relax the jaw. Sounds odd, but relax your eye lines so that it relaxes the, um, the ligaments of your eyes that connect into the back of the neck, help relax into the neck then. Stay where you are, take a breath in. As you exhale, keep the bend in the knees, start to roll up to standing. Really focus on the tailbone coming down first and then placing one vertebrae on top of the next as you roll up. So keep the chin towards the chest until the rest of the spine feels aligned. Place the head on top, roll the shoulders down on your back. Take a step forwards towards the top of the mat. Feet stay hips distance apart, so just about one of your feet could fit between your feet. Right, hips distance, is it? Stretch the toes open as wide as you can, so occupy as much of your mat with as much of your feet as you can feel into the ground. From there, draw the tailbone down without tucking, you just have a sense of lengthening through the back and lifting through the front. Then as you inhale, sweep the arms around to the side and up to the ceiling, maybe the gaze lifts to the thumbs. As you exhale, round the arms again, all the way down towards your fold. Bring the hands to the shins, reach the breastbone forward, try and lengthen the spine from tailbone to crown of the head. Exhale, soften over the legs, 
Bend the knees enough so your fingers find the floor and set the right leg back behind you. Place the knee down to the ground. Bring your arms up towards the ceiling. It's that low crescent lunge. Get the sink of the hips slightly forwards and down towards the front heel. Interlace the fingers together and place your head into the basket of your hands. If thumbs are tracking down the sides of the neck, hug the arms in towards your temples and then lift your elbows towards the ceiling. So you just create a little bit of chest lifting. As you're exhaling, really pull in the belly to spine. It's a strong core to keep you balanced. Keep pressing the front heel into the floor to keep you grounded. On your next inhale, straighten up the body again, lift the arms to the ceiling. You're gonna take a twist. So as you exhale, turn your shoulders towards the left, in towards that front leg. The arms are gonna reach wide with the palms facing up to the ceiling. Imagine how someone has hold of either wrist and is pulling the arms either side a little bit longer. As you inhale, lift the arm back up to the ceiling again. We're going to twist the same way again. So exhale again, turn to the left. Keep that front knee really steady so it doesn't turn with you. Long through the arms. Inhale, come back up to the center. We have one more. Exhale, turn again to the left. Same direction. Reach the arms long, holding there. Bring the back of your right hand to the outer side of that front leg. It's gone over the knee. Good. Press the back of the hand and the leg together so your left hand reaches further around in that rotation. Keep your spine really straight upright. So, so it's got a metal pole running down your back. Good. Last couple of breaths where you are. Keep that shin. Well done. As you inhale, bring the hands back up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, bring the fingertips down to the floor, just holding in this lunge a couple of breaths longer. Bring the left hand to the inside of that front foot. So just open the front foot a little bit wider towards the edge of the mat into a lizard pose. If you can or you want to, shuffle your front foot forwards a little bit further so it lengthens away from that back knee. Knee can be down or up, entirely up to you. Take two breaths where you are. Keep the spine long. Lift the hips up and back. Slide the left foot round into all fours. Give the hips a little wriggle. Tuck the toes. Come into your downward facing dog. Moving into your down dog, however, feels good to move. And then begin to walk your feet towards the hands or the hands towards the feet. Come into your forward fold. Soft bend into the knees. Stay where you are, take a full breath in. As you exhale, slowly rolling up through the spine. Again, head will come on last, like the cherry on top of a cake. Roll the shoulders down your back and take a step forward. So we're going to start with standing, feet hips distance apart, so just a few inches between them. Have that sense of lifting through the front body and lengthening down through the back body. Inhale, lift the arms around the sides and up to the ceiling. When they get to the top, see if you can lift them up a little bit higher for the torso lengthen. Then exhale, take the arms around to the side again and into the fold. Take a halfway lift, consciously lengthening from crown of the head to the tailbone. Exhale, fold into the legs and step the left leg back behind you, placing the knee to the ground. Inhale to lift the arms towards the ceiling. Interlace the fingers together and place the head into the basket of your hands. Have a sense of scooping the head up away from the neck as you lift the elbows towards the ceiling, the armpits trying to face up to the ceiling. Really pulling in through the lower abdominals and sink the front of the pelvis towards your front heel. On your inhale, straighten up the spine and lift the arms. So again, imagine you've got that metal rod going down the spine. So it's really straight. So as you exhale and turn towards the right, turn towards that front knee, it's like your ribcage is spiraling around that metal rod of your spine. 
Inhale, brings the hands back up to the top. Exhale, turn the same direction again. So turn towards the right, lengthen through the arms, palms up to the ceiling. Inhale, come back up to center. Last one, exhale, keep that front knee really steady. Holding where you are. Bring the back of your left hand to the outer side of that front leg. Press them together and reach the right fingers further back to the wall behind you. So feel that right shoulder blade squeeze in towards the spine. On your next inhale, bring the hands back around and up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, bring the fingertips to the floor, sink the hips forwards, and then hop your right hand to the inside of that front leg. So you come into that lizard pose again. Take the front foot a little bit further open so the shoulders can come inside that thigh. Maybe the front heel wriggles forwards a little bit or back knee further away. Good, and keep the spine lengthening. Keep the breath moving. Two more breaths. Lift the hips slightly up and back. So again, you can slide this right foot around into your all fours. Give the hips a wiggle. Tuck the toes underneath and come back into your downward facing dog. Hurdle through the feet. So holding in your downward dog, keep a bend into your right knee, but press the left heel towards the floor. So your left leg is really straight. Think as though the back of your left knee is trying to press towards the wall behind you. At the same time, lift your tailbone further up so you get a really deep lengthening down the back of that left leg. Take a full breath in. And as you exhale, switch the legs. So the bend is in your left and you press the right heel down. Press out through the back of the right knee. Lift the tailbone and the sit bones up towards the ceiling. Take a big breath in. Exhale, soft bend in both knees. Bring both knees to the floor and come into your child's pose again, folding back. Keep the arms lengthening out in front of you. Elbows lifted. Think about the armpits trying to wrap down towards the floor. Take two or three big breaths so that you feel the breath move into the back of your ribs. Like you're stretching your back with just your breath. Coming back forwards and up into your downward facing dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, and walk the feet up towards your hands. Again, come into your forward fold. Using your exhale to slowly roll you back up to standing. Come up to the top of the mat, feet hips distance. Take an inhale as you sweep the arms around and up to the ceiling. Holding at the top, take another breath in, reach taller through the torso. As you exhale, come back into your forward fold. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, step the right leg back, keep the knee lifted. So see if you can push through the front heel to bring the hands all the way forwards and up. Then drop the back heel to the floor and turn the body. So you're in your warrior two. So the front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. Again, imagine you've got that metal rod going down the spine. So lifting up through the front body, drop the tailbone towards the floor. So not tucking, but just dropping it down. Turn the palms up to the ceiling and keep turning them so you feel the chest reach up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, turn the palms the other way towards the floor and to the wall behind you. So you tuck the chin towards the chest. Keep it going one side to the other, those kite hawk arms. So like we did at the very start, when we rolled the fingers and the wrists that moved to the shoulders and the shoulder blades, create that feeling again. So as much movement through the shoulder blades, rotator cuff and the rhomboids in your back. 
to then bring yourself back into your kind of neutral warrior two, palms facing the ground. Imagine someone has hold of your wrists again and is lengthening the arms away. Keep that deep bend in the left knee, arms stay reaching away. Just drop your left ear towards the left shoulder and imagine someone's pulling that right arm even further away. Roll the chin towards your chest, keep your balance. Bring the right ear across towards the right shoulder, lengthen that left arm away. Chin towards the chest, turn the palms up to the ceiling and take the same again. Left ear towards left shoulder, reach the right arm away. Chin towards the chest, right ear towards right shoulder, reach the left fingers away. Chin towards the chest to spiral the arms all the way down towards your front foot. Lift up the back heel and step your back foot to the top of the mat. Come back into your forward fold. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the leg. Step the left leg back behind you. Lift up through the arms and open round into your warrior two. So again, just holding still. Find that long spine, again, deep bend into that front knee. Here we go. Palms facing the floor to start with. Then start spiraling the palms open, the shoulders back, lift the chest. Exhale, spinning the hands, spinning the elbows, the shoulders and your back. Create as much movement as you want to in your spine, as you as you can. You can connect the breath with it. So the exhale is when you're kind of looking down. Inhaling as you're rolling the chest open. Come back into that more neutral feeling of the arms, palms facing the floor. So exactly the same head roll again. So drop your uh, left ear towards left shoulder, reach the right hand away. Roll the chin through the chest, right ear to right shoulder, lengthen the left arm away. Chin towards the chest and the palms up to face the ceiling. Left ear to left shoulder, reach the right hand away. Chin towards the chest, right ear to right shoulder, lengthen the left hand away. Chin towards the chest, bring the head up straight, spiral the arms down towards your front foot. Stepping your back foot to the top of the mat into your forward fold. Stay in the fold, take a full breath in, bend the knees enough so your hands are flat to the ground, walk your feet back again to the back of the mat to come into your downward facing dog for the last time. Last little paddle through the feet or swing up the hips. And then bring the knees down to the floor, so you're back in all fours. As though you're coming through a seated position, bring the hips towards your heels, and then drop the hips over to one side so you can sweep the legs around in front of you. So, let the hands just rest to the ground behind your hips. Move your knees a little rock from one side to the other. And then bring yourself all the way down onto your back with the knees in towards your chest. Take a gentle rock side to side on your spine. Bring the feet to the floor and bring yourself into any variation of a Shavasana that works for you. So maybe you keep the knees bent or maybe you come back flat to that starting posture Shavasana. See where you can create more space in the body, maybe around your chest or your shoulders or your neck. Close the eyes if you feel comfortable to or keep the gaze on something steady at the ceiling. Find that samavriti pranayama, that even pace of breath again.
And then begin to just change the tone of your breath so that it carries a little bit more energy through the body. Let's give the wrists a roll, the ankles a roll. And then bend your knees so that your feet find the ground and just let your spine reset into the floor. Take a really deep breath in. And a soft but full breath out. Roll yourself over to one side, whichever way feels good to go. And then use the hands to help you press to seated. Let's bring to mind one thing you can feel grateful for today. Recognize something that you're good at, that you know that you're good at. And recognize how getting to your yoga mat has served you in some way today. Close that to the heart center. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, bring the head to the hands. Thank you so much. Namaste. Well done. Thank you, ladies.